day and you flipped it around Calm the tide wave and put my feet on the ground Forever in my heart, always on my mind It's crazy how I think about you all of the time And just when I think I'm about to figure you out You make me want to sing and shout I love the way you hold me by my side You'll always be just like each and every day Make you special in some way I love the way you hold me Welcome to Meadow Spring Church. Can you all stand and worship with us this morning? I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Till I may but not the life. All my failures I try to hide. It was my turn. Till I may. Call my name and direct out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. Call my name and direct out of that grave, out of the darkness into. Saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The only new Jesus when I made you. Call my name. My sin was heavy, the chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. When you call my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day.
Remember those walls that we caught sin and shame? They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we call death and grief. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came. Giants are dead now. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God. King Jesus. I fear that took our breath away Face so weak that we could barely pray But he heard every word, every whisper Now those altars in the wilderness Tell the story of his faithfulness Never Lord Jesus, we do love you in such a uh, real way, God. We're here to proclaim your love um, all around this place, God. So I pray that as we hear your message this morning, that you would continue to prepare our hearts for what you have to say to us this morning. All this we pray in your amazing name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, Meadow. Morning. What a great, great day. Glad you're here. Next week, next week is a big Sunday for us. It's our Thanksgiving celebration. We're doing a couple of different things in the morning. We are having uh, baptisms. If you have not been baptized yet as a follower of Christ, 
What a great way and great time to do that. Um, if you've made a new commitment to Christ, baptism, get baptized. And basically, to, we'll talk about this in a little bit, to publicly say I'm making a new commitment to Christ. But that's next Sunday. We're going to have... <clears throat> Nice job. Uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, after the service, we're going to have a time of just hanging out with food. So bring your food, bring your Thanksgiving leftovers, especially the pumpkin pie and the dressing. <clears throat> Not that I will let you know what my favorite is, but, uh, uh, but the pumpkin pie and dressing must be here. But whatever's left over, and if you don't have any leftovers, Bring something, you know, but we're just going to hang out next Sunday after the service and have lots of, lots of time to just uh, fellowship and, and be with each other. And the other thing that we're, well, don't we have a slide for that? We're working on the slides. Um, but uh, the other thing that we're going to be doing next Sunday is we're going to be sharing some life stories and testimonies, uh, worship. It's just going to be a really good, fun, encouraging, refreshing Sunday next Sunday, okay? And then two weeks from today, we're starting a brand new series called Stressed. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dealing with how to handle the stress of the holiday season. And it's going to be, uh, we're looking at how to uh, uh, make sure your in-laws don't become your outlaws, how to make sure you can, you can stay focused. And we're going to be talking about things like that. In your program is, a, is an invite card. You know about this. And so, uh, uh, yes, I see that hand, uh, um, but uh, so, um, <laughs> and uh, so use that invite card to, to invite a friend uh, to come with you two weeks from today. Uh, today is the last Sunday that we're in this series called New. We've been talking last week and, and again this week on, on the whole new, the whole uh, what does it mean to become new in Christ? The Second Corinthians five seventeen says, uh, uh, "All things have become new." And let's start this way. Let's say you're out looking for a new car, and you want a new car. You don't want a used car. You don't want something. You don't want a beater just to get around. You want something that's really nice. I mean, you want heated seats, cooled seats. You want a rear view camera. You want remote start. You want push button start you want uh you want you want everything in this car you want uh cruise you want automatic and powered seats you want gps you want satellites so that you so that the kids in the back seat can be watching videos as you're traveling you want um anti-theft device i mean you want every you want what we call a fully loaded car fully loaded problem you don't have the money to buy it and so you're at the dealer and you're looking at your dream car knowing you don't have the money to buy it and someone walks up to the dealer as you're looking at this car pulls out this wad of cash and pays for that car right in front of you what's the deal I mean, there's no way you could, I mean, even to take out a loan would put you in debt, you know, above your head. You couldn't even handle it. So, what, I mean, this guy just bought the car out in front of you. And he turns around and he says, here, and he gives you the keys. He says, it's yours. I'm giving it to you for free. He can't believe it. I mean, it cost me nothing, but it cost this guy a lot now granted that's n never gonna happen well if it does I want to be your friend okay <laughs> but it's most likely it's not gonna happen but let's shift the gears and think about spiritually and with our relationship with Christ when a person becomes a follower of Christ there is a significant change that takes place as 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. There is an old and there is a new. 
And there is a great change that happens between the old and the new. And one of those changes is that God fully loads into your life spiritually every spiritual blessing. A a follower of Christ is fully loaded. In fact, Ephesians 1, it says, I receive every spiritual blessing. When you become a follower of Christ, when you move from old to new, you receive every spiritual blessing. Ephesians 1, 3, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Another version says, through Christ, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. Every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. Not 90%, not 95%, 100%. Every spiritual blessing. Now, these are not material blessings. These are spiritual blessings. They're not temporary. They're eternal. Once you have them, you have them. They do not wear out. They do not get old. They stay fresh. They never run out. It's not like the fully loaded car that eventually will get old and Rusty, and you'll have to replace it. Not so with spiritual blessings. It's not, I mean, every follower of Christ has every spiritual blessing, and it's not in a situation where, okay, you have just read half of the Bible, here's more spiritual blessings. Okay, you have read the Gospels, here's more spiritual blessings. Okay, you've memorized so much, so much scripture. Here's more spiritual blessing. Okay, you've gone to church so many times, we're going to give you more. Sp- no. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. It doesn't matter if you're a new Christian or you've been a Christian for many, 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 many years. You receive every spiritual blessing, 100%. 2 Peter 1.3 says, God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Everything. Thing we need for life and godliness. Colossians 2.10. You also are complete. You are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. In fact, if you are a follower of Christ, you can't get any more. You have every spiritual blessing. There's nothing more to receive. You are totally and perfectly complete in these spiritual blessings. And again, I've got to say it again because people will say, they look in the mirror and they go, well, not me. Whether you've been a follower of Christ a day, a week, a year, 10 years, many, 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 many years, you have every spiritual blessing. If you've been a follower of Christ for 25 years, or you've been a follower of Christ for a week, you both have every spiritual blessing. You say, okay, already, I get it. I get every spiritual blessing. What are these spiritual blessings? Let me give you a couple of examples. Number one is peace. A spiritual blessing is peace. Jesus says in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, My peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now you might respond to that and say, well, wait a minute. Does that mean someone who hasn't received Christ does not have peace? Well, the answer is yes and no. You see, the peace that the world gives is dependent upon circumstances and situations and how my life is going today or tomorrow or this week or how, how the economy is or how the world is going. I mean, that's what the, the peace of the world gives. The peace that God gives as a result of a spiritual blessing goes far beyond that. It's a peace that doesn't depend on circumstances, a peace that doesn't depend on experiences or emotions or how the country's going or how the world is going or how the economy is going. 
It's the, it's the kind of peace that kicks into high gear when there is some kind of physical or emotional or social pain. The pain that is there, the, the pain is there. This kind of peace doesn't prevent pain from happening. The pain is there, but it's, it's, there's something there that's unexplainable that says it's going to be okay. I had the privilege this week, this past week, to spend a little bit of time with my dad. And again, I will say that when I grow up, I want to be like my dad. He is just an amazing man, deep, deep, deep in his faith. And three months ago, when my mom passed away, my dad, again, he said she was at such peace. And my dad is at such peace. It's not dependent upon, it's not even dependent upon death. There's just this peace there that goes deep inside of you that says everything is going to be okay. That's the kind of peace that God gives you the moment you become from old to new. Strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. You have the strength to endure. You have the strength to to persevere. You have the strength to keep going, to not give up, the strength to, to go beyond what, what others will be going beyond. Another example is love. You get love, and this is not, not the emotional kind of love. Paul writes in Romans 5, 5, hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Poured out his love. You have All the love that God can give you is a spiritual blessing. And another one that I think is just amazing, and I don't fully understand it, but it's the truth, and that is one of the spiritual blessings is you are an heir of Christ. Romans 8, 17, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Now stop right there, can you just try to get a grip on what it means to be a co-heir with Jesus Christ. Co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Christ's riches are our riches. Christ's resources are our resources. Christ's power is our power. Christ's righteousness is our righteousness. Everything that has been given to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has been given to you and I as children of God. We are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. I mean, that alone just will blow your mind. Now, having all of these spiritual blessings doesn't mean that you're perfect in, in your life. I mean, you will sin because... You have the sin nature inside of you. All right. If, if I said something wrong. You see, when you go from old to new, the new is you become positionally right with God. Not practically. Practically is how we live our lives. There's still going to be sin. There's still going to be things we'll do wrong. But positionally, in the eyes of God, we've got the righteousness of Christ. I mean, you can add to these spiritual blessings joy and patience and goodness and kindness and self-control. One that just continues to amaze me, and I've mentioned this before, and it's not going to be the last time I mention this, but when you go from old to new, God the Father actually gives you as a gift to God the Son. Now, God does not give his son junk. He only gives his son priceless, that which is absolutely the best. That's what you are when he gives you to Christ. So how should we respond to all this? As I understand more and more all of the things that God has done in my life and all the things that God has has given me and made me to be, my response is just overwhelming gratitude. God, I don't understand why you gave me all this and why you've made me like you've made me, but thank you. 
I mean, and, and I, I praise you, and I have utmost gratitude, and, and that gratitude can be expressed in several different ways. One way, because of all that God has done to me in my life and all these spiritual blessings that I continue to understand more and more, one of the things that I can respond in gratitude is I get to tell others. I mean, why? Why would I want to keep this to myself? Why would I, if I have, if, if I understand the amazing, refreshing, uh, uh, unspeakable, priceless blessings that God has given me, the more, why would I want to keep that to myself? If you had the cure to some, you know, incurable disease, would you keep it to yourself? Of course you wouldn't. You'd tell everybody about it. So I ask you, now that you are new, who are you going to tell? Who do you know that needs to know about the blessings and the refreshing relationship that Jesus Christ can bring into your life? A friend? Someone in your family? Maybe a coworker? In fact, I mentioned already that two weeks from today, we're starting a new series called Stressed. What, what an amazing opportunity to invite someone. In fact, I just read this past week that 86% of the people that were surveyed said they would come to church if only someone would invite them. 2%, only 2% said they come to church because they saw an advertisement. Social media doesn't work to, uh, to get someone to come to church. A personal invite. I challenge you to take that invite that's in your program and to give it to someone. And if you need more, there's more on the Welcome Center. But I am going to tell others because of all the awesome things that God has done in my life. Second of all, I'm going to serve. <clears throat> I am. How can I say thank you, God? Well, one of the ways I can say thank you is by serving. Paul says in Romans 1, 9, God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his, of his son. Why did Paul say I serve with my whole heart? Because he understood what it meant to go from old to new. He had an understanding of all of these spiritual blessings that God puts in his life. He knew and understood the difference between new and old. He knew that God changed him from being dead in his sin to being alive in Jesus Christ. And his response was, I'm going to serve with my whole heart. And what, one of the interesting things about this particular verse is that word serve can also be translated worship, which is amazing when you think about it, because serving and worship go hand in hand. True worship is, is far more than just singing. We talk on Sunday mornings, join us in worship, and we don't mean that the singing is all there is to worship. Because worship and serving go hand in hand. True worship, true worship is serving others with the whole heart. Because when you serve others, especially in ministry, you can't be thinking of yourself. Your focus has got to be Christ and has got to be others. So I ask you, where are you serving? How, how are you expressing your gratitude to God through, through serving other people? You see, here's something else. It's a, probably a, a spiritual blessing. The moment you became new, God blessed you with spiritual gift, maybe more spiritual gifts, maybe more than one. And spiritual gifts are spiritual blessings that are meant to help you in doing God's will and serving in the church and serving in the community. If you are new, you have at least one, probably more than one spiritual gift. And you go, okay, great. But what are these spiritual gifts? Great question. I have an answer for you. Next Sunday night, we're actually doing a special 
get-together where we're going to talk about discovering your spiritual gift. We're going to give you a tool to help you discover what your spiritual gift is so that you can express your gratitude by serving in the way God has wired you. And here's what you've got to do. Just take that Connect card, fill out the front, and on the back check or just sign up for, for the spiritual gifts gathering next Sunday night at 530 how do I express my gratitude? Here's one. I'm going to get baptized. Now, maybe some of you have already been baptized, but maybe you haven't been baptized, or maybe you've made a new commitment to Christ, and, and it's time. You see, baptism is all about going public. Last Sunday, the Vikings played the New Orleans Saints. We won. It was a, it was a good game. Well, because we won. But if you went to the game, you knew who was for the Vikings. There was purple everywhere, skull chant, and they were clapping. I mean, they were cheering, they were yelling. They, you know, everybody at the game goes public. You know who was for what team. No one says, I'm for the Vikings, but it's a personal issue. I'm just going to sit here and watch. How many people, I mean, I know I don't like to point people out, but Jessica Mackey, <laughs> she never comes to Sunday church that the Vikings are playing. Her hair's not purple. She's not wearing a purple shirt. I mean, she's purple, purple, purple. You don't ever hear her going, it's just a private issue. No one will know. Baptism is going public with your relationship with Christ. It is saying, I am a follower of Christ and I am not ashamed of letting others know. I am dedicating the rest of my life to following him. I have been forgiven. I have been given all these spiritual blessings. And I am going to celebrate and express my gratitude through baptism. In fact, What's interesting is the word baptism is actually called, it's the Greek word baptizo, and it wasn't even a religious Christian word to begin with. It was, it referred to a dye maker in the, in the marketplace, and the dye maker would take one piece of cloth that was a color, a certain color, and he would dip it into a dye, and it would come out a different color. It identified with that color that was called baptizo. When you are baptized, you are identifying with Jesus Christ publicly. It is telling the world that you have been changed from old to new. Because of the change God has brought me into, I'm going to go public. I'm going to be baptized. Guess what? Next Sunday, we're celebrating baptism. Why wait? Why wait? Get baptized next Sunday. Have you been baptized as a follower of Christ? And I'm not talking about infant baptism. In fact, the infant baptism wasn't even brought up in church until 300 years after the New Testament was, was completed. But as a follower of Christ, it's a significant step of faith and a significant way to respond to the reality that God has made you new. You might be new to a relationship with Jesus Christ and you haven't been baptized. Get baptized. Maybe, maybe you have been baptized, but your life has just kind of gone away from God and you've made a new commitment or you want to make a new start. What a great way to make a new start. Then I'm going to get baptized. Take that Connect card, fill out the front, and let us know. And the last thing that I'm going to mention, although there's many other ways, how do I express my gratitude? How do I say thank you, God? Well, I'm going to sing. 
I am going to sing. I'm going to, to use my voice. And I'm going to sing with everything I have. Psalm 40. <clears throat> the scriptures are filled with the power and the purpose of music. <clears throat> Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on the rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He moved me from old to new. He put a new song in my heart, in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Psalm 149, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the saints. Psalm 100, shout. <clears throat> it's, it's loud. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. You know, one of, the, one of the things that we work hard here is that when we do sing, when we do do music, we don't want it to be like a funeral. We want it to be a celebration. I mean, on the calendar, Easter comes once a year. We celebrate it every Sunday that the tomb is empty. There is power and there is purpose in expressing gratitude through singing. And everybody here can sing. Well, I can't sing very good. Oh, I see you with the windows rolled up in your car. <laughs> it doesn't say, God doesn't say you got to be a good singer. In fact, he says make a joyful noise. <laughs> there is power and purpose in expressing gratitude through singing. And that's how we're going to wrap up the service today. To wrap up this series, I'm going to have the band come back up to get ready to lead us in a couple of songs. And we're going to sing. And we're going to sing with all our hearts. We're going to sing with gratitude. Why? Because God has made me new. God has moved me from old to new. If anyone is in Christ, all things have become new. The old has passed away. I have received every spiritual blessing. I am an heir to Christ. I have the love of Christ. I have the strength of Christ. I have the peace of Christ. I, my, his righteousness is my righteousness. His possessions are my possessions. His power is my power. I'm going to sing with all my heart. I have been changed. I'm not old anymore. And the more I realize it, the more it drives me and compels me to use my voice and to express worship and gratitude and praise at his great name. So let's, let's stand and let's spend a few minutes thanking God for all that he's done in our lives because he's made us new from being old.
your name the mountains shake and crumble at your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out Lord of all the earth we shout your name shout your name filling up the skies in this place in this place Yahweh, Yahweh we love to shout your name oh Lord at your name Story. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies within this place, in this place, Yahweh. Shout your name, 
shout your name, filling up the skies, me in this place, in this place, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies, me in this place, in this place, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name. Here's my hope and here's my prayer is that today's message or this short two-week series is not something you're going to put in your brain and go, oh, that was good, but it will be something that lives out in your life Monday, every day of the week, and, and especially the practical things that we talked about this morning about, about telling others and serving and getting baptized and singing and, I mean, what great ways to, to leave here and yeah, we've worshiped and we've sung and we've praised God as a church, but what about individual? You know, take it with you and let's put these things into practice, all right? Next week is going to be an awesome week. You know, don't wait till two weeks from today to invite someone. Invite someone to come with you next week. It's going to be a good Sunday. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for, for everything that you've done in our lives. And even just to say thank you just doesn't seem to really speak what is in our hearts. Thank you that the tomb is empty, that Jesus is alive. Thank you that we can live out what you've done in our lives. Give us a great day, a great week. Give us opportunity to put into practice what we have been challenged with and help us to understand more and more and more every day all that you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming. Have a great day.